Okay, it's day 42. And as you can see, there's a lot of vertical growth for these two plants. They're a lot taller than any of my honeydew vines. So this plant here has a very standard textbook development. But this one in the middle is a little atypical. One of the leaves just kind of ended in a weird loop like that. And there's one leaf here. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Just seems like some sort of rot. Maybe I overwatered early on. And this just seems to be a really, really long curled up leaf that hasn't unfurled yet. Here we see four springtails and a fungus gnat. So I haven't really been aggressive with the sand because I don't want to bury any new shoot systems that are coming up. There's a lot of uh, fungus gnats and springtails and there are pebbles. I'll make sure to sift those out the next time just so I have only uh, small sand particles falling in and filling in all the cracks in the dirt. Like that would be an example of a bud I don't want to cover with sand completely. I want to let everything have the chance to photosynthesize. So this shoot system is coming along nicely. It's getting a lot taller. And this is coming off the central rhizome cutting. So it's that bud that was dormant and kind of hidden for a really long time. So when I put some sand on top of the soil, I took into account that I didn't want to hide these buds. So I left them some room and they're becoming more and more green. But I'm thinking since this one was buried the entire time and came out just fine, maybe I should just bury everything with sand and just put this uh, fungus gnat and springtail problem to rest. Okay, it's day 44 of this ginger germination experiment. And as you can see, they've grown quite tall. This one grew from a bud that was uh, subterranean for a really long time and it's coming along quite nicely. So that'll be basically four plants if these other two buds and you can see a little bit of green. Let me show you like right there and right there. Those are the other two buds that are regenerating quite nicely after the fungicide treatment. In other news, if you look here, this bud actually looks pretty green so it was just pale white for the longest longest time and you know I did a fungicide treatment on a bud that's sort of buried over here somewhere um, but basically I've already demonstrated that these buds don't really need to see sunlight to come you know funneling out of the dirt on their own so so over here I don't really like what I'm seeing you know this is another rhizome cutting that already has a very successful bud that's developing very nicely but this is just a, it has signs of molding and death you know at the shoot apical meristem so I'm gonna give it a quick deconal treatment So I took the liberty of spraying some extra water in places I think these uh, nascent developing buds will need some water. I'm not worried about the established plants because for plants this tall they probably already have very extensive uh, root systems that are hurrying to fill the pot. So those have access to water that's much deeper into the soil but these buds probably don't. That and the fact that I added sand recently, so that could have dried out some of the dirt on the top. Okay, here you can see some fast forwarded footage. Uh, it's 10x fast forward of me basically getting rid of all the pebbles by sifting them through this strainer. It's a normal kitchen strainer and to the right you have my bag of sand and you can see the condensation inside. It's very wet. So you'll notice at this point the dirt underneath is very wet still and that's no surprise based on past experience and the two rhizome cuttings that you can see exposed uh, that have no buds of any kind on them they're still inert and I'm wondering if they're ever gonna flourish by germinating at some point. The question is can rhizome cuttings that never had a bud and that's not always that apparent in the supermarket you know when you buy these things sometimes they're very very unnoticeable um, just like in certain kinds of potatoes can rhizome cuttings that don't have any apparent buds 
generate a shoot ape chimera stem or a bud and I don't know yet um, we'll just wait and see until the very very end of this mini series if anything ever happens it seems like nothing's ever gonna happen but as my honeydew series has taught me you know plants are full of surprises especially if you haven't worked with them before extensively like I am doing now um, I had very very little experience prior to all this plant growing so basically I think there's still a chance with enough moisture and given enough time I mean they're not soaking in water so they're not going to rot um, there's still the potential that they have enough energy in them to generate shoot apical meristems and new plants so what you're seeing here is the sum of basically 20 minutes of work so it's a lot of work when the plants are established if the plants weren't established this would be a very easy job if I had done things right the first time I wouldn't have to strain out all these pebbles by scooping them manually and putting them in a strainer. It's day 45 of this ginger germination experiment and as you can see there has been a lot of growth and not only that you can see from the previous footage that I just you know overlaid a lot of sand and I filtered out all the large rocks well pebbles uh, to be more exact so from now on fungus gnats and other bugs shouldn't be a problem uh, they've basically abandoned this pot altogether. So I just wanted to zoom in on these uh, anomalies. This is the very first true leaf that just kind of formed a loop on the tallest plant from the center rhizome cut. This is from the smallest of the four shoots sticking out. Its leaf looks uh, kind of broad for its uh, proportions and size. And we've seen things like this before and this will probably resolve itself within a day or two.